This is the second in a series of three videos developing a new element type of beam or frame element. I'm making the distinction in the two where a beam element is only capable of resisting transverse loads but not axial loads. The frame element will also be introduced in this video and it can also take the axial loads in addition to the transverse. Let's start out with a quick review of what we did in the first video. The simple beam element has a total of four degrees of freedom that are associated with transverse displacement, two actual transverse displacements, and then two uh, slope changes, um, one at each node. So the degree of freedom vector consists of four terms. There are four unknowns for this element, and they are transverse displacement at node one and two, and slope change at nodes one and two. Because we've introduced slope, that has actually changed what we mean by the displacement field vector. It now has two terms um, and does not include axial yet. So there is no u of x, but there's a v of x, which is transverse displacement, and there's a phi of x, which is slope change. We also developed the shape function matrix from the expression u equals n times d, where the n's represent the uh, shape functions associated with each of our degrees of freedom and they're shown here they are cubic functions as we wanted in order to be able to capture cubic variation of displacement for a standard beam bending. We in addition found the relationship between strain and displacement in a beam and we defined it in matrix form as the partial derivative matrix operator minus y d2 dx squared and zero and then finally, we put that together with N in order to find the B matrix. The B matrix is the strain nodal displacement matrix. It's the one that links the degrees of freedom to the strain vector. And then we evaluated the shape functions shown to express the B matrix just in terms of X, Y, and L. Now that we have that background, we can go in and develop the element stiffness matrix. The formula that we have for element stiffness matrix came from the stationary potential energy and it is that in local coordinates k prime is equal to the integral over the volume of whichever element we're talking about b transpose times d times b uh, dv. So again b is the strain nodal displacement matrix and d is the uh, material properties matrix. For the 1D element, both the bar and the beam, the D will reduce to just Young's modulus. So let's plug these terms in to get K prime. So remember that B is the second derivative of each of the shape functions, but it's got a minus Y out front. And then as I said already, the D matrix simplifies to E. Now what we can do is cluster those two Y's together and then break our dv into a dA times dx. And in so doing that, we can uh, take dA and move it in front of all of the shape functions because the shape functions only depend on x. They don't depend on anything inside of the cross section. They just depend on the axial position. However, y does depend on what's going on inside the cross section. So it needs to be inside that integral for dA. But observe, that this is what we call the moment of inertia, the cross-sectional or area moment of inertia for a beam. That's how I enters into the stiffness for the beam. So we replace that integral over the cross-sectional area with just I, and we can substitute in the second derivative of each of the shape functions. Then we multiply the two uh, the column and the row matrix in order to get a 4x4 four four matrix inside of our integral here. And because it's symmetric, we don't need to evaluate all 16 of the terms, just the unique ones as shown. This can take a little bit of a while, um, but you end up with a matrix as shown. This is the order Bernoulli beam element stiffness matrix for the simple beam element, the one that doesn't have axial degrees of freedom. So note that the degrees of freedom that we're talking about here are d1y, phi1, d2y, and phi2.
The Euler Bernoulli beam element is a great element, and it's one that we will use extensively for hand calculations. However, in FE codes, the element that's much more powerful and useful is the frame element. This is the element that takes the principles of the Euler Bernoulli, capturing transverse displacement and bending moments, but also includes axial terms as well. So now I'm going to take you through the development of that frame element. Basically, it's the Euler Bernoulli beam plus two additional degrees of freedom that take into account axial displacement or axial stresses due to axial forces. Now, what we need to do is go and look at each of the shape function relationships. So for a bar element, we already know a good relationship between the axial displacement and the degrees of freedom. We've got two additional expressions now for transverse displacement and slope relationships. I'm going to write all of those in matrix form where I take the vector u is equal to the shape function matrix n multiplied by the degree of freedom vector d. Putting that all together, this is what it ends up looking like. So I have now uh, three rows and six columns in my n matrix, but I've captured all six degrees of freedom and all three directions of motion that I'm allowing, or, or displacement field variables. Now, um, these shape functions we actually already know about. We know the shape functions n1x and n2x from the bar element, and the n1y, n2y, n1 phi, and n2 phi we developed just in the last video for the Euler Bernoulli beam element. So I'm just putting these all together. After defining my degrees of freedom and my shape functions, the next major step in developing your stiffness matrix for a new element is to determine the B matrix. Now to get to the B matrix, we need to know the relationship between strain and displacements, and that is captured in our matrix that I call the partial derivative matrix operator. So the B matrix is going to be the partial derivative matrix operator multiplied by the shape function matrix. Parcel derivative matrix operator comes from the relationship between strain and displacement field. Now for this element, we have two things that are contributing to our uh, internal strain. We have axial strain due to axial displacement. That's the du dx term. But then we also have within a cross section strain that depends on the distance from the neutral axis. That's the minus y d2v dx squared term. So we want to capture both of the, these in our partial derivative matrix operator and rewriting that expression, I get this partial derivative matrix operator, d by dx minus y d2 dx squared and zero for the three terms in the row matrix. Multiply that by the shape function matrix from the last slide, and we can get our B matrix, another row matrix. Put this B matrix into our expression for the um, stiffness matrix in local coordinates that came from the potential energy formulation, and we get the stiffness matrix shown. So we can certainly go through that process. However, recognize that when you take that B matrix, which has six terms, and you multiply it by its transpose, you will get a six by six matrix. And you then need to evaluate those terms inside the integral. So it's a lengthy process, and we have a bit of a shortcut that we can take. Notice that the four boxes that I've outlined here actually constitute the um, or the Bernoulli beam stiffness terms. So there's actually a shortcut. Let me show you. Instead of formulating the frame element as an entirely new element, we can also consider its formulation from the perspective of element assembly. If we have a bar element and we overlay that with an Euler Bernoulli beam element, we will have the formulation that we want, something that resists axial load, transverse load, and bending moment. So with that in mind, we want to go through the assembly process. The fact that they happen to be in the same place is perfectly fine for us from the FE formulation. We simply want to assemble the degrees of freedom as appropriate. So first off, the Euler Bernoulli matrix looks like this. 
We want to label the rows and the columns so we know where each term is going to go in our full system matrix. Next, the bar element looks like this. I want to change around the terms so that the same coefficients out front. So now I have EI over L cubed in front of both of these. And again, I've labeled the rows and columns so I know where the terms are going. Next, I set up my six by six matrix with all of the degrees of freedoms identified for the rows and the columns. And then I walk through the assembly process. So first off, I'm going to take those frame terms and I'm going to put them in the appropriate place for D1Y, Phi1, D2Y, and Phi2. So you see I actually need to split that matrix apart in order to fit into the appropriate spots. Then I'm going to take the bar matrix and very similarly put those terms in where I've got the D1X and the D2X crossing. And everywhere that does not have a box identified is going to be zero in the matrix. And that gives me the final frame element stiffness matrix, the same one we would have gotten by a more formal derivation process.